so we will now do the arohana arohana of the ragam shankara varnam in the c scale or one kattai or microtones now gamakas can be approximated with flat notes as follows sa ri na sa na ri ga ri the way it comes as sa sa ga ri ga ri now if you do that continuously it becomes sa ri Shubham Gamakam Ga is flat Ga Ma Ga Pa Ga Pa Ga Ma Pa Flat Da Pa Sa Da Sa Da ragam shankarabaranam <clears throat> so we saw how the microtones or gamakams added a lot of flavor to the ragam so even though we added the microtones uh, what we showed was just the structure of the arohana and arohana with the microtones um, when we use the word ragam or ragam alapana we mean that uh, we we refer to the shape that is projected by the artist of the ragam or the aesthetics of this of the ragam that is projected with artists so this is much more abstract than uh, than what i showed but what uh, we showed in the arohana arohana with the microtones forms a basis for that abstraction okay so we move on in fact you may hear shades of shankaravarnam when somebody plays the western c major or the hindustani bilawal but the shades are different for the c major and the bilawal and the shankaravarnam the c major does not have any gamakam Bilawal has some gamakam but the usage of the gamakams um and the conventions are are fairly different and uh, it's a uh, uh 
the uh, one simple uh, over simplification that can be made for carnatic music is that you see much more shorter phrases and more rapid change in terms of the pace of the gamakams and uh, sung as phrases um, which are set to sahityam or um, what are called alapana sangathis or swarakalpana sangathis versus in hindustani it's uh, it's much more uh, meandering and um, uh, they try to find all the color for a single gamakam before proceeding to other gamakams okay so this is a, a very high level distinction it is important to listen to some music to figure out if you can really identify an artist go through these gamakams a simple rolling of the tongue subtle jumps and modulation or vibrat- vibratos are all indications of varieties of gamakas also if you are the type that questions authority you may equally well question the melakrita selection rules why should we always include pa and why can't we include both the ma1 and ma2 keys in the same scale in hindustani music there are ragams that which use both the ma ke ma keys and though it is a general no no in um, the mainstream of carnatic music once you become uh, more advanced you'll see that in carnatic music has also adapted some pieces with which uses both the ma's especially ragas like sindhu bhairavi finally we should notice a fundamental difference between the western system of scale building compared to the melakarta system or the 72 raga system in the western classical music you you started off on a specific key used the algorithm to generate the next key which in turn led you to the third key of the scale and so forth you sequentially generated the keys one after the other just by shifting a whole tone or half tone by a curious coincidence even the um uh, elikramam algorithm in silapadi karam is a similar mode shifting or a tone shifting algorithm by contrast the melakarta scheme is a brutally mathematical scheme where you selected seven keys out of a possible 12 keys subject to certain constraints here you figured out the frequency relationship between the keys much later one important consequence in the western scale system the keys in a scale are not more than a whole tone apart that is any major or minor scale you skip at the maximum just one key whereas in the melakarta scheme you can choose key 1 key 2 key 3 key 4 7 key 8 key 11 key 12 by the algorithm this corresponds to ragam ragupriya notice the big gap between key 3 and key 7 between ga and ma where we skipped over three keys this uh, this uh, amounts to skipping two whole tones or four semitones we also skipped um, two keys between pa and da the keys uh, 8 and 11 such large intervals can produce unpleasant listening experience and usually these intervals are called vivadi or uh, vivadi notes okay and they should be used with care even though ragupriya like ragam is legitimate ragam um um uh, just to give you one example of a vivadi ragam um not the melakarta but a derived one called natai it is very beautiful ragam but it has two notes which are very close to each other and uh, two notes which are farther from each other sari ga ma pa da ni sa sa ni pa ma ri sa so you notice that the rishabham sa ri that ri is very far from sa and the way it, the gamakam was sa sa ri ja ga ri ja ri ga ri ga ri and ri and ga were very close to each other ri ga ri ga ri ga ri okay ri ga ma ga ma was also close so these kinds of uh, close ri ga sa ri are called vivadi usages and they should be used carefully some of them are aesthetic some of them can be quite unaesthetic and uh, and it has